I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 96, Mission Impossible. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Ocean and published by Infogrames. Alright, I know some of you are wondering, no, I have not seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, but some of the themes from them are so popular that I know a decent amount about it. Anyway, this game was one I wasn't aware existed before this challenge. Why didn't I hear about this one? I mean, we had GoldenEye, which was a super popular shooter. I figured I was in for a mediocre first-person shooter. It seems like the kind of thing you did back then, you know? Want to make a game based on a popular IP? Throw a platformer on it. Or, when this generation of console happened, throw an FPS on it. Regardless, I was a bit excited to play it, as it's real fun to discover new games from this challenge. Let's get into it. The opening of the game has the famous song from the movies and introduces us to the characters. Oh man, they got the song. There's Jim Phelps, who runs the entire operation. Candace Parker, who is a brilliant cryptologist. Jack Kiefer, who I guess helps spies escape from scary situations. Andrew Dowie, who, uh, I don't know, I think he shoots people? He's also good with technology. And then there's the main character, Ethan Hunt. He's super skilled and takes the lead on missions. They really nailed Tom Cruise's look with this model. The only thing available in the game is the single player story mode, so we'll be doing that to beat this game. It asks you which difficulty you want to play on. Possible or impossible? Well, thankfully the default was on possible because how are you supposed to win if it's on impossible? It then shows the mission select screen. The first mission is Ice Hit at the Lundfist base. We get a cutscene with Jim Phelps sitting on a park bench with a peculiar briefcase. It kind of looks like a portable DVD player's inside. The government wants us to go to the base to sabotage the submarines. Some medium range missiles are being smuggled to other countries and the US isn't happy with that. Then it gives you a bit of overview of the mission with some text along with who will be taking part in the mission. Apparently the hardest part of this one will be a long tunnel with many guards. And then it shows the cool spy gadgets we get to use. Like the communicator. I guess this thing would have looked futuristic back then. Also, the iconic face maker. It can create a mask of anyone's face to create the perfect disguise. And then we finally get into the gameplay. To my surprise, it was a third person view. After jumping over the fence via some boxes, I was inside the enemy base. I just kind of ran around aimlessly and ended up in a house. There was a piece of paper on the desk and it said I completed my first objective. Find an excuse for an errand. Sure, I'll take a free win. Unlucky for me though, a guard showed up. He demanded to know who we are, so Ethan comes up with the brilliant excuse that he's here looking for his dog. You know, I think the guy almost bought it. However, after some critical thinking, he's like, Hey, wait, this is a secure military facility. Why would this guy be looking for a dog? He must be a spy! So I just shot him. Speaking of shooting, the game offers sort of a first-person view for it. I shot another guard who just kind of shrugged it off and kept walking, I guess. The AI's not the smartest in this game. I was a bit confused at first, but that fuse at the bottom is actually the health meter, and the number above it is the current ammo. I thought things were going well in this mission, but it just randomly said mission failed because I failed to get to the sub pen with clutter. How am I supposed to know what to improve on if I don't even know why I failed? Well, if I failed the mission, may as well go out in style. <laughs> It turns out I had to use that face maker on the first guard I killed. Now with the new disguise, I could freely roam around the base. I had two objectives done now, so I just needed to get to the sub pen with clutter. The only thing I had left was the letter I got at the start of the mission, so I tried using that on the guy by the gate. He said he doesn't drive, so I should ask Boris. Wait, why does it matter about you driving? And who the heck is Boris? I went around asking everyone, and seemingly the final guy I spoke to ended up being Boris. He drove some military style vehicle through the gate and I snuck in the back. Also Clutter somehow sprints up to the vehicle and gets in with me? How did no one see him? <laughs> well whatever, the mission was considered beaten from this point. This was still the first main mission, but now we're on the second part. We've still gotta sabotage the submarines. 
My objectives were to find magnetic mines, give them the clutter, then meet up with Dowie for a getaway. This is that heavily guarded tunnel we were told about initially. Well, I thought it would be at least. It shows us already past the tunnel and in the submarine bay. I guess that wasn't hard after all. Of course, our disguise wears off, so we're in this one in full danger mood. So the top right corner of the map is Ethan's scanner. It points you in the direction of certain objectives. By going to the red dot on it, I easily found the mines. And then I walked it over to Clutter, and I just had to escape. Apparently there was a patrol boat in the area, so I needed to use my other mine to blow it up. I walked over, laid the mine, and then made my way to Dowie for our getaway. This was really easy. And that was the end of Mission 1. I'd say it's more like a tutorial because there's honestly no real challenge. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music. I thought the graphics weren't very good, honestly. They're not terrible, but they're quite below average, I think. The music, however, was awesome. I'm not sure how much of it is from the movies, but I liked pretty much every song they used. So now it's on to the true first mission, recover the NOC list. We see Jim Phelps sitting on a plane, nonchalantly watching top secret government intelligence reports with no headphones, and there's someone right beside him. It's talking about the IMF's top hacker, Candace Parker. They put her in jail because they think she has the key to the NOC list, but it's stored in CIA headquarters. Robert Barnes was deployed to rescue her, but he hasn't been heard from since. We just assume he's been captured. Oh yeah, it still says the message will self-destruct. Like, is that not gonna cause a scene on the plane? It's gonna create so much smoke. There were quite a lot of objectives for this mission. I had to find the face maker, find a score, find nausea powder, find a drink, place smoke generators, assume the ambassador's AIDS ID, and then access the restricted area. So this mission was way different. We're a guest at a big party, so we don't have to hide from people. However, we also aren't supposed to hurt anyone. I uh, just couldn't help myself though, and <laughs> I wanted to see what would happen if I did. <laughs> Looks like we're taken prisoner and possibly shipped in a crate to Siberia? Okay, never doing that again. So one of the objectives is to hide smoke generators. They're used way later on. Basically, there's these vents scattered throughout the venue, and I had to place one in each of the six vents. I then went to the bathroom, and it informed me this is probably the safest place to knock someone out if I wanted to be unnoticed. Also, this is the weirdest freaking bathroom I've ever seen. I think it's a gender-neutral one, but the two stalls inside are labeled by gender? What does this even accomplish? It made no sense. Then these people at the party said we looked like a famous American movie star. I'm not sure if that's them breaking the fourth wall saying we looked like Tom Cruise or what. I wasn't really getting anything accomplished, so I went into the main hall. There was a guy playing the piano extremely loudly, and I decided to ask him about the ambassador's aid. He said that he never comes out of his room, and the only thing that gets him to is if he hears his favorite song, his hometown's national anthem, the Slower Sky of March. Yeah, that would get me out of bed too, for sure. I asked him if he would play the song, but he said someone took the music sheet, and he doesn't know how to play it. The bartender was in on it with us as well, and he gave me a drink along with nausea powder. Ethan casually slips the drink into his vest, and somehow it doesn't spill. It literally makes no sense. I went back to the people who thought I was Tom Cruise, and now the girl was alone. Apparently this is Sarah who brought the face maker for us. I asked her to give it to me, but a guard saw us and I was arrested again. Aw oh man, come on. Getting caught here revealed a very frustrating thing with this game. There's no concept of a checkpoint. If you lose at any point in the mission, it's all the way back to the start, no matter what. It gets really draining after a while. I tried to get the face maker again, this time looking both ways to see if anyone was watching. No one was there, but then Sarah freaked out and said someone saw us. Somehow this guard warped behind me or something, I don't know, that's the only way I can explain it. Third time was the charm though, and I did receive the face maker. I figured next I should try to give the drink to someone. While doing so, I accidentally found a music sheet lying on a random chair in one of the halls. I brought it to the piano player and now the ambassador came out to hear his favorite song. Oh my god, I love this song. With him being all hyped up on this patriotic music, I offered him a toast, conveniently giving him a free drink to go with it. He said he was feeling sick and sprinted to the bathroom. The plan had all fallen into place. Now I just had to hit him with this blowpipe. 
what did that not hit what why didn't it knock him out i was so confused and then i tried to beat him up but i guess he started feeling better so i chased him out and got arrested again <laughs> back to the start once again this time around i made sure to hit him in the head with the dart Maybe it's like the Mile High Club mission in Modern Warfare where you lose if you don't get a headshot. So I drug him into the stall and used the face maker on him. I mean the technology of copying someone's face is already far fetched enough, but how did I get into his clothes? I had to hurry. It showed me a video of someone finding the ambassador's body, but it was too late. I had already made my way past the guards and into the restricted area. Man, this mission was so cool and way ahead of its time. It reminds me a lot of the modern Hitman games. Well, now it was on to part 2 of the mission. My objectives were to find the exit key and access KGB HQ. I was in some underground tunnel now with a single guard. The way past was blocked by a pile of boxes labeled with a radiation symbol. Instead of, I don't know, climbing over them or just picking them up and moving them, Ethan decides he needs to beat up the guard and steal his gun to shoot them. Great, now there's radioactive waste spilled all over the place. And then there was this bigger box that I shot and it exploded in my face. I just don't see the point of all this shooting, man. Eventually, I found a radiation suit in one of the boxes so I'd quit taking the passive damage. Now feeling safe, I was making my way through the facility just shooting every box in sight. One of them had this glowing metal thing inside. Apparently, it's the K-30P and it's some kind of satellite communications device. Since I found this piece of it, HQ says I now need to destroy the other pieces. So if I didn't find it, I would have just been fine with it being there, leaving it in their hands? There's also these big pools of some green slime type stuff. I don't think this is a Nickelodeon slime storage facility, so that's gotta be like uranium or plutonium byproduct, right? There's no way a place like this would exist with people casually walking around it. But the mission was kind of tedious for the most part. It was just shooting every box, hoping I found something necessary inside. After 10 minutes or so, I did find the KGB HQ and entered. So now being inside, our disguise will let us in, but we don't have complete authority. We need to use a face maker on someone even higher up. My objectives were to talk to Barnes, find a video freezer, find a face maker, find a dart gun, sabotage the video link, find the exit card, get the transfer order, and escape with Candace. Sounds easy. Right away, I found a room with Barnes sitting in a big office chair. He was looking kinda rough. He said he hid the mask of the head of security in the hall and I'll find it in the... Aw oh, man, he decided to take a nap. Guess we're on our own from here. I explored some more and found a prison cell where Candace was being held, along with some sketchy looking guy. Before I knew it, it said I'd picked up the video freezer, which that guy did not like. He alerted the rest of the place that I was an enemy, and the jig was up. Next time around, I ended up finding that face maker in a supply closet. With this, I was allowed to meet with the head of security for some reason. Don't know why they wouldn't let me in before. I engaged in some small talk about the prisoners being held here, and then I found the dart gun on his desk. A simple headshot took him out of commission. I hid the body behind the desk and used the face maker to assume his identity. There was a bookcase with a button leading to a secret security room in the office. In here, I found the exit pass code. I went back to that sketchy guy and asked if I could take Candace with me, and he said he can't without the transfer order. Man, stupid red tape. Guess I'll take this video freezer and ruin the camera here then. When I did that, the guys inside started shooting at me. Either this room is soundproof, or maybe these guys just shoot their guns a lot. You'd think this would cause chaos, but everything was fine on the outside. With the security jammed, we sent a fake transfer order to the headquarters, and I grabbed it. I gave it to the sketchy guy and now I had Candace come along with me. Everything was in place. I took Candace to the exit and those people were none the wiser. Now we've got to escape the KGB HQ with Candace. Apparently we're in a security hallway with lots of traps. Definitely can't go back the way we came since it's going to be contaminated with radiation for the next 80,000 years. My objectives were to simply secure passage for Candace and activate the master switch. Immediately into the mission, Ethan gives Candace a gun. Uh, does she know how to use that? Also, come on devs, you really couldn't do any better with her face model? Like, this is insulting. Candace went to a computer terminal and deactivated the security floor. Well, sort of. Only some tiles were deactivated. The red ones are still dangerous. 
I had to jump across, and it was so janky. The jumping itself isn't all that bad, but Ethan's head hits the ceiling every time you jump, so he comes down super fast. At least it only damages you and isn't like an instant loss. There were a few guards who would show up occasionally, but the dart gun made quick work of them. Also random, but when you shoot someone, Ethan says, yeah, way to go. in a real weird voice. Is he talking to himself or supposed to be talking to me? I don't get it. After some horrible platforming, I found the master switch, and I guess Candace was able to leave as well. The mission was over before I was even two minutes into it. Still not done with this behemoth of a mission, now we have to find their supercomputer to steal the NOC list. Apparently they store it in the local sewer for whatever reason. My objectives were to find the supercomputer, protect Candace, retrieve the NOC list, and escape. This mission's annoying because you have to protect Candace the whole time, and she says she's sick from food poisoning. Right away, I came into the strangest room ever for a sewer. It probably looks like this because all that radiation leaking through the drains in the other room. There's moving platforms that would make sense in something like Crash Bandicoot or Mario, but not Mission Impossible, come on! Missing a jump here is costly. I got past the room on the next attempt, and there was a computer terminal to fix the floor to make it OSHA compliant. A guard came and Candace panicked, saying I needed to save her. What was the point of giving her that gun if she's just gonna stand there? I couldn't hit the guy because of an awkward angle and she was captured. Ugh. I ran through the area safely next time. Killed some dudes in a big tunnel, now I was in an office. There was another computer terminal in here that opened the door to the supercomputer. When it did, it showed a three minute timer on screen. Good thing I have no clue where I gotta go. I sprinted out of there back to the beginning area, and Candace complained I was going too fast. Like, listen, I get it, but we've only got three minutes. She slowly made it to the supercomputer where I'd been waiting forever, and she took the NOC list. With that, I just had to go to the exit, and this part was complete as well. Now it was time to make our grand escape. We're going back through the security tunnel where Barnes hid that mask of Golestine. We've got to find it so we can portray him as a traitor to Russia. The objectives were just to secure passage for Candace and to find the mask. The floors were safe to walk on now, but somehow they installed these turrets in the ceiling in that time that we were in the sewer. If you shoot them, they get disoriented for a second and you can run past. I had Candace do her magic on one of the computer terminals opening the wall. I ran through and it shut behind me. The guards showed up and I thought Candace was done for, but she did a roundhouse kick. Unfair though, she can't take on multiple dudes at once. At least I found the mask inside. There was a panel in here and it just asked what can I do with this? I was trying all kinds of stuff, so I got fed up and punched it. <laughs> and that's actually what you're supposed to do. How could I have been so stupid? I found where Candace was and she said a guard ran off with the NOC list. Aw oh, man, that's probably the guy I let run off a couple seconds ago. Yeah, I failed because of that. This time around, I made sure to shoot the guy before I checked on Candace to make sure she was injured or something. And I beat it easily. It immediately jumps into the next part of the mission without any kind of briefing, and there's a three and a half minute time limit to go along with it. I put on the mask to pretend to be Golestein, thinking everyone would be friendly, but no. The guards decided to attack me with fire extinguishers. Guess I'll just have to shoot everyone. I went back into the security office's secret room and unfroze the security system. Now I had a minute and a half to get out of here. The problem was, I had no idea where out of here was. I just couldn't seem to find the door to leave the place. I ran out of time and Jim Phelps was furious. What's worse is if you lose, it takes you back to the security hall with the turrets on the ceiling. It turns out the door with the massive amount of smoke coming from it was where I had to go. You know, how we placed all those smoke generators earlier? Probably should have remembered that. And now it was time for the final part of the mission. Actually get Candace out of this place. My objectives were to secure access to the lift, find Jack, dress as a fireman, give Candace a fireman outfit, and escape. Jack was one of the firefighters in the bar area. He told us to go to the bathroom to get our suits from him. I sprinted to the bathroom, changed into the firefighter outfit. Thankfully the guard stopped shooting me when I put it on. Candace was at the elevator and she put one on as well. And finally, we both left the building, completing this huge mission. Heck yeah. Phew, that was a long one. But the game doesn't stop there. Now we're on a completely new mission, CIA Escape. Apparently, we've been accused of being a mole in the CIA for some reason. Now we've got to find a way out of the interrogation room. 
I have no idea what I even did wrong. My objectives were to escape from interrogation, pick up my equipment, and get into the hallway. It shows Jim Phelps and some other guy telling me I have to be the mole, and I must be the one feeding info to Max. There's no way I could have survived that embassy mission. It was supposed to be impossible. Alright, I have no idea where this even came from. The game doesn't explain any of this. Like, the name Max just gets dropped out of nowhere. Candace manages to call in on the intercom. She tells us she's hidden some explosive gum under the coffee mug. With that, I blew up the glass to the other side, where all my equipment was. The communicator, a fingerprint scanner, and a dart gun. When I left the room, it showed Phelps and the other guy talking about a serum. I think they gave me truth serum or something? Whatever it was, it apparently takes 10 minutes to activate, and that's all the time I have for the mission. One frustrating thing in this mission was the security cameras everywhere. If you move past one, it sends a guard at you, and there's a seemingly infinite amount of them. It just gets tedious dealing with them over and over. One of them snuck up on me saying I was under arrest and he hit me with a taser. I thought that would be game over, but he just kind of stood there staring at me, so I shot him. They're really not sending their best to stop me, huh? After roaming around for a while, I found that guy who was with Phelps earlier. He put his hands up and said, don't shoot, he's unarmed. Yeah, fair enough, man. You don't seem like a threat. Oh god, he activated the alarm. Why did I trust the person trying to get me in trouble for a fake crime? On the next attempt, I found a can of spray paint Candace hid in the hallway. I could use this to block the view of those cameras, and that made the mission way better. Also, with learning new things on the second go, I didn't hesitate to shoot that guy in the face when I ran into him. Jim Phelps was in the room next to him, and I didn't want the alarm tripped again, so I shot him as well. But then it said I failed my objective. Apparently, I am supposed to shoot the side guy, but not supposed to shoot Phelps. How was I supposed to know that? It all seemed so arbitrary. So once again, I did all the explosive gum stuff. This time, I didn't shoot Jim Phelps, and he hits me with a taser. And then he ran off. I very slowly chased him through the hallway. He just took ages to move. In a different room, Ethan said his vision was starting to fade and he couldn't walk straight. Phelps ran into an elevator and I didn't want to shoot him because it made me lose last time. Well, he took the elevator away and it said I failed. Oh my god, I keep screwing up. Now this time, I made sure to follow him into the elevator. He tased me again for some reason, so I shot him. Thankfully now, that was apparently the right decision. Now we were in the infirmary, and Ethan sure looked rough. I didn't really know what it wanted me to do, so I just pushed a button on the nearby treadmill. <laughs> Somehow it made the guy running on it fall off in horrific fashion. It looked like he was yanked back by some demonic power. The doctors ran to check up on him, but I still didn't really know what to do. I was just kind of wandering around when one of the doctors turned around and was like, Hey, you're Ethan Hunt. You're under arrest, buddy. And then, of course, I went all the way back to the interrogation room. This mission was so annoying, man. I just couldn't figure out what it wanted me to do in the infirmary. I needed some medicine to counteract the serum they gave me, but it didn't let me do anything in the room other than the treadmill. One time, it just randomly triggered an alarm the instant I entered the infirmary. I didn't even do anything, come on. On like the fifth try or so, I finally realized I could just talk to one of the doctors and she'd give me the antidote. Guess I should have tried that from the start. Now that I could walk around normally, it let me climb out the open window in the back. I thought surely this would be the end, but no nope. big mistake. Everyone ran over and thought I was gonna jump, so they wanted to save me. But then they pulled a gun on me anyway. What is wrong with these people? Finally, I realized I needed to wait until they were completely distracted by the guy falling and it let me climb out the window safely. There was one of those window cleaner platforms waiting for me and I made it to the roof to escape. Good riddance. Now I had to climb to the top of the roof to meet Candace. It won't be easy though, but at least there's a helicopter up there to escape. My objectives were to sabotage the heliport lights, find my bag of equipment, find zone digit cards, fix the lights, paralyze the helicopter with EMS, enter the security level, find the security level code, and meet Candace. There's these searchlights on the roof that send guards at you if you walk into them. I was a bit disappointed to see that the spray paint from the previous mission didn't block them. This level essentially has you running around the roof, occasionally shooting dudes with the dart gun. They try to arrest you, but it doesn't work. 
Well, except this one time when a guard was directly around a corner with no way for me to see him. I found an electrical panel along a chain fence. This turned off the lights to the helipad. Seemed like a weird place for this, but sure. The guards were furious at me for doing this, though. One went as far as to phase through a locked door temporarily. I was sure I'd outsmarted him, but nah, he still arrested me from a mile away through a wall. Absolute garbage, man. I couldn't really figure out where to go from here. The only place was that locked door. After getting arrested like 37 times, I realized the equipment bag I retrieved at the start of the mission had the maintenance outfit inside. With this disguise, they opened the door for me to repair the lights, although they were still trying to arrest me for some reason. Hey buddy, I can't fix your stuff if you're trying to lock me up, okay? Now I had access to the helipad itself, and I inserted the EMS into an electrical box. However, it said I fit the objective. What? I thought that was what I was supposed to do. Well, a few minutes later, the helicopter crashed in a huge explosion. I guess I was supposed to wait till it landed to do that. The next time around, I fixed the lights first. The helicopter landed safely, so I went to disable it. However, I didn't realize it was a speedrun section. The helicopter flew away before I made it to the box, and it crashed again. Oh my gosh, I gotta do the entire thing over every time I fail. Finally, I did the things in the right order, and the helicopter was stuck. Just had to finish the rest of the objectives without any more slip-ups. Now I moved to where there were some infrared beams blocking the path. Candace was smart and included a deflecting beam in my stuff, which gave me safe passage onto this level of the route. The interaction with these is kinda janky though, and you can get electrocuted by them just from walking past. <laughs> didn't realize I could do that. This area had a locked door I needed to go through, and Candace didn't have the password for some reason, even though she's a master computer hacker. Instead, I had to place a camera on a box near the door to record someone entering the passcode from a distance. Finally, after so much trial and error, I made it to the very top where Candace was waiting. Phew, two frustrating missions in a row. Now, Candace wants me to sneak into the computer room of the CIA HQ to retrieve the NOC list that we stole a while back. She says she gave the computer operator some bad coffee, so we've only got a bit of time before his stomach recovers from it. My objectives were to switch on the computer, get the NOC list, and escape. So they put the iconic repelling scene in the game. You know, going through that huge vertical shaft with all the lasers. I decided to see if I could just gun it straight down, and yeah, that doesn't work at all. Ethan fell flat on his face. One thing I thought was funny is the gadgets used for this mission. It shows the N64 controller as what's controlling the cable. I guess it's Candace doing it? But it does give you the controls here, and man, it's weird. You move the cable up and down with B and A, simple enough. Where it gets annoying is you use the joystick to rotate and swing Ethan. It is just so hard to know where your true position is based on the camera perspective. Sure, you're able to move the camera, but it doesn't help much. The red lasers damage you, which isn't too bad. The ones that end your run are the yellow ones. If you hit a single one, the alarm is activated and the mission's over. It's really funny imagining the thought behind the guard as he sees Ethan just dangling there. Like, oh, you're probably wondering how I got myself in this scenario, huh? I did end up getting down there by waiting on the yellow lasers to move out of the way. However, Jim Phelps was standing in the doorway waiting for me. What? What am I supposed to do about that? Basically, you gotta get down there real fast because you're on a hidden time limit. When you get to the bottom, you're expected to swing Ethan to the computer to insert the virus. And good luck with that. I'm sure there's a consistent way to do this, but man, it felt like I was fighting with the game here. Ethan wanted to swing every direction except toward the computer. This took me so long to even sort of get a hang for the controls. By sheer willpower, I finally reached the keycard to switch the computer on. But that's only half the battle. At least when you do this, it locks the door so you have a bit of extra time. I fought with the game so hard to get Ethan onto the computer. The timer had ran out, but it said I retrieved the list and inserted the virus. No one was coming for me, so I thought I was a home free and ascended back to the top. Or not. Jim Phelps somehow saw me when I was at the very top of the shaft, and he still arrested me. Finally though, I did successfully achieve my objectives. Ethan goes back up and Candace is relieved we somehow did that madness. You know, this probably could have been achieved easier by like, I don't know, dropping a flash drive in the parking lot or something. 
Now it's the final part of the mission, to actually escape. We placed the EMS on a helicopter to prevent it from leaving, so we've gotta go there, deactivate it, then fly away safely. This was just a standard mission with one extremely frustrating part. So if you recall, there were these laser beams blocking access to the secure area. Previously, we used a deflecting beam to clear the path. Well, I guess Candace ran out of those, so we've gotta find a new way past. There was a pile of boxes I could easily jump over the beams with. The problem was, if I jumped from them, Ethan got stunned when hitting the ground and I was immediately arrested. No problem, I'll just shoot the guards down there. Except it's impossible to aim low enough to hit them. There's like, no way to survive if you go this route. No matter how many times I tried, I always got arrested. The only other way down is with a lower set of boxes. And oh my god, this jump sucks. Honestly, I wasn't even sure if it was a possible jump at first, because I failed it so many times. It genuinely feels close to pixel perfect. I'm not even sure if the devs knew it was possible. I feel like the higher stack of boxes is the intended way, but it just wouldn't work. Outside of that jump though, this one's easy. Ethan climbs on the landing pole things, and I was disappointed he entered the helicopter rather than hanging from the pole with one hand, flying off into the sunset. That would have been way cooler. And with that, we're on to the final mission, Mole Hunt. Now that Ethan successfully escaped, he's gotta locate the real mole to prove his innocence. We're meeting with that woman named Max, who will supposedly reveal this to us in exchange for the NOC list. There's two ex-CIA snipers coming with us to make sure the deal goes well. The objectives are just to protect Ethan and take the train. So it starts with a cutscene of Ethan meeting up with Max and two sketchy looking dudes. We ask for the name of the mole, but she says she won't tell us without checking the validity of the disc. Sure, we'll give it to you. But then she says shouldn't have trusted her and she tells her goons to get rid of us. Then it switches to the sniper view. I figured I just needed to shoot the bad guys, but it said Ethan got shot and I got a game over. Dang. What you're supposed to do is wait around for Ethan to turn around and roundhouse kick the bad guys. And then he somehow phases through a bench as if he were a ghost. Real weird. Ethan walks slowly around the train station and I had to shoot all the bad guys. I took out two more sketchy looking dudes, but there was this woman acting like she was ready to take on Mike Tyson, so I shot her too. It said I killed an innocent civilian, but come on, she was going to beat Ethan up. And then on the next attempt, the same woman pulled out a gun and started shooting. And it still said I killed someone innocent. What the heck is going on? Okay, finally I figured it out. It's not just the sketchy trench coat guys, it could be anyone working with Max. You've just gotta watch for people to start shooting, then shoot them before they kill Ethan. If you kill any of the wrong people, you immediately fail. There was this one part where Ethan walked behind a sign and started yelling that he was being shot. Like, I can't move, so what do you expect me to do? Anyway, the entire mission's just this sniper stuff. Once I got the hang of it, it wasn't too bad. Now we're on the train pursuing Max. Candace believes the mole might be on the train as well, although we still don't know who it is. My objectives were to neutralize Max's henchmen, meet Candace, find the switch to block the exits, knock out Max's bodyguards, stop Max, and seize the NOC list, and defuse Max's backup plan. Jeez, they want a lot out of me. The start of this mission is just running further and further up the train, shooting all the bad trench coat dudes along the way. Sometimes they'll use a civilian as a body shield, so I had to be careful not to miss my shot. After clearing out four cars, I ran into Candace. She gave me a gas capsule to knock out Max, as well as a face maker to steal her identity, I assume. Yeah, never mind, that was completely wrong. Ethan freaking throat punches one of the train conductors to use the face maker on him. Uh, that seemed like a lethal hit, but sure, whatever. I screwed up though and went into the next car with my gun equipped. This caused all the bodyguards to attack me, and Max realized it was me. This caused her to activate a bomb she planted on the train, taking all of us out with her. Next time, I made sure to play the part and put the gun away. I went into the car where Max was and deployed the poison gas. Issue is, it also knocked me out, and I failed once again. Man, I feel like I find all the ways to screw these missions up. I decided to just ignore her for now and went on to the next car. Who was there? None other than Jim Phelps. That's right, turns out he was the mole the entire time. He just ran away though, so I followed him further. I found a safe in the back car where I presumed the bomb was. However, she activated it anyway. 
What the heck, dude? How did she know it was me? It seemed I had to take Max out first, or she'd always detonate it. So this time I tried an alternative approach by just launching the gas into her room while walking past. Somehow her bodyguards didn't suspect a thing, even though they were still pointing their guns at me. She dropped the NOC list along with the detonator, but apparently she had it on a timer anyway, so I had to find a way to defuse it before it went off. I found some liquid nitrogen and Ethan had the best joke in existence about it. He said that stuff could freeze a chili pepper in a heat wave. But wait, if the pepper is chili, that means it's already cold, right? Ah, whatever. I sprayed the safe first with a blowtorch, then with liquid nitrogen. This caused the supports to snap off, and I defused the bomb. Ethan then escapes to the roof, chasing Phelps to stop him once and for all. My only objective here was to stop Phelps. Naturally, the first thing I tried to do is leap off the train just to see what happens. And yeah, that was absolutely worth it. The start of this mission is just slowly running down the train while a bunch of bad guys try to stop you. For some reason, they slide back when you shoot them. It just looks so weird. There's also helicopters that show up to provide support for Phelps. They will literally swoop down and try to splatter you. It's a good thing the first guy drops a rocket launcher pistol to deal with these things. There's no way something like this could exist, right? Getting to the end of the train, I saw Phelps leap onto the bottom of the helicopter, and I blasted it with the rocket pistol. He was toast. It shows a cutscene with Candace and Ethan walking into the IMF HQ. And hey wait, isn't that Phelps walking out at the same time as us? What the heck, did they just reuse his model, or does this mean he's supposed to be alive? One of the leadership guys says they intentionally set Ethan up to motivate him to uncover the true mole. Kinda messed up. Then he says he's got another mission lined up for us. So it seems like the mission chasing Phelps was the final one, but there is one more after it. I think it's required to beat the game, or maybe it's bonus, I don't know. The first mission was called Ice Hit, and this is Ice Storm. That same guy is back in the game and making another explosive steal that we want to stop. This area looked quite familiar. In fact, I think it's exactly the same map as the very first mission. At least the objectives are different. Essentially, there's just a bunch of items you need to run around and collect, all marked on the radar. If you're too slow though, the team gets caught and you fail. After going on a collecting spree, my crew blew up the pump house, causing chaos in the base. We got in big trouble on the roof of a building, so we decided to just leap off and land on a truck somehow. After finding some night vision goggles in a guardhouse, I accidentally used a gas injector, causing Ethan to die of poisoning. Well, that's what I thought happened. It advanced to the next mission anyway, so uh, I'll take it, I guess. The next part of the mission was way different than anything else. Ethan's riding on the back of a truck through a dark tunnel, and it's essentially a platformer. There's beams to jump over and plenty of room to mess up. Failing a jump is fatal. Along the way, I had to stop at these walkways and set explosives on the bolts keeping the tunnel together. I didn't really know what to do after that, though, so I just jumped down and it said I died. I don't know man, that doesn't seem like a lethal fall height to me. Man, the platforming in this part is so awkward. It's so easy to mess it up and one mistake means you go all the way back to the start. I ended up having to land on a passing truck after setting the explosives. It always felt so scary because it just seems like the kind of thing that would force you to die even though it looks like you landed safely. But yeah, I just repeated that four different times and jumped on a truck to make my escape just before the explosion happened. Next, it's time to stop the arms deal. We have to use a face maker to pose as the accountant for the deal. The main thing I remember here is crossing the river all awkwardly. The interaction with this slope just isn't great. I went into a building looking for the accountant and instead I got arrested through a wall. What's up with that? Also, I thought it was funny how it lets you escape the level without doing a single objective. Ethan's like, yeah, screw this mission, I'm out. So I was supposed to disable the electricity in the area before going in. That's why I got caught before. I made it to the guy's office, he put his hands up. I couldn't kill him, so I just hit him, somehow knocking him out with a single punch. Using the face maker, I assumed his identity and I was ready to kill the deal. The first building I entered was a guard's sleeping quarters and man, he was not happy I woke him up because he just started shooting at me. Someone's cranky. I found the place I was supposed to go and entered the vault. There was a briefcase there that I was supposed to deliver. 
I brought it to the guys and, unbeknownst to them, it was rigged with explosives. They flew away in the helicopter and, boom, they were toast. Now I safely left on the boat as the power plant nearby exploded. Only one final mission to go. Candace wants us to destroy the entire base. It seems this boat is like a military gunboat, even though it didn't look like it at all when I first got in it. All you do is fire these massive machine gun turrets at literally anything you see. I have no idea where this mission even came from. Like, the rest of the game's sort of a shooter, but there's so much of the stealth element too. Now we're just going straight Mad Max on the base. It doesn't fit the game at all, but it is kind of fun. I made it to the end, and there was a submarine waiting for us. Candace was there, of course, and she said we were her hero. Then it just says the end, and the credits played. So if you wait till after the credits finish, this game has something awesome. It takes you back to that mission at the Russian embassy or whatever, and instead of how it usually is, it's the devs of the game standing around. And you can talk to them and they'll be like, oh, my name's so-and-so and I worked on graphics or whatever. Naturally, I wanted to see what would happen if I attacked them, and oh my god, the devs have got hands. They absolutely kicked my butt, and uh, that was the end of that. I don't know. I thought that was so cool they threw that in, but yeah, that's about it. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Mission Impossible. This one was quite an adventure. I know there's a lot of funny things that happen due to jankiness in the game, but I enjoyed this one a lot. I feel like the missions where you had to blend in with the crowd and sabotage things were awesome. It was quite ahead of its time. It's not a perfect game by any means, but it's a good time, I think. The music is top tier, but the graphics are below average. The biggest gripe I had with the game was the lack of checkpoints. It was frustrating to have to repeat a mission from the very beginning if you make a mistake. All in all though, I'd recommend checking it out. I gave it an 8.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. Uh, so there are 294 on the list currently. Could be anything, who knows what it'll be. 3, 2, 1, go! 156, didn't we just see that? We are playing Monaco Grand Prix. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.